Hello. Welcome to World News. Please subscribe. This is my three questions, and got an answer to everyone. Why are we not hearing Russia's side of the story in the media to explain why they are fighting with Ukraine? And is there not always two sides to a story? Has Russia's invasion of Ukraine, taking almost one year and failing to capture more than a single major city, exposed Russia's military might as a paper tiger? Why can't Ukraine use full military force to defeat the rebels in East Ukraine given that Russia can't invade Ukraine openly and with its own military? Ask new question A.M. Wilkinson, M.A. International Relations, University of Sydney, 2005, May 31st This is my answer, because you're not reading all the battle reports. The Battle of Lyman, 23rd to 26th of May. Firstly, everyone in their cat knows which side I support in this war. Russian readers grumble that I should be sent to the Gulag for calling it a war, but that doesn't mean I won't cover major events that go in favor of Putin's forces. Because the only way to truly appreciate what is happening is to acknowledge the good, with the bad. Last week, on Monday the 23rd of May, the city of Lyman just north of the Siversky Donets River, came under brutal assault by a large determined Russian force. Lyman and its hugely important railway hub, was the latest Russian objective in the raging Donets pocket. Supported by heavy armor and under the cover of brutal artillery barrages, the Russian forces engaged the defenders on the outskirts of the small city and after hours of hard fighting managed to secure a foothold in the suburbs. Boris, you're the best, thoughtfully distracting us with a lovely red carpet. I almost forgot we're sitting on lethal explosive reactive armor while hurtling towards a brutal urban engagement that many of us will not survive. By Tuesday the 24th, the Russians were engaging Ukrainian ground forces in heavy street fighting and gradually creeping forwards towards the center of the city, as the defenders switched to a staggered fighting withdrawal, slowly giving up ground while making the Russian ground forces pay a heavy price. As dusk approached, the streets were littered with dead from both sides, Russian infantry had seized a strong forward position amongst the ruined buildings and firefights continued. The fighting was primarily carried out by dismounted infantry, as the carnage of the urban fighting chewed through vulnerable Russian vehicles. The outnumbered Ukrainian units tasked with holding the city of Lyman were the mighty 57th Motorized Brigade, supported by elements from two separate air assault brigades and the 81st Air Mobile Brigade. While this was a formidable Ukrainian defensive force, the sheer weight of the Russian offensive was too much, the streets had become a savage meat grinder that showed no mercy and took no sides, and young men from Russia and Ukraine bled for the streets of a place few could name. The 57th Motorized Brigade was performing a textbook fighting withdrawal in the streets and the surrounding countryside, but the Russian offensive troops were determined and reports from Lyman began to look desperate. The 57th had been cycling soldiers on the front lines and had sent a fresh unit of 240 men to the front on the 24th and only 130 men returned 24 hours later, the rest being dead, wounded or captured. The 57th Motorized Brigade had entrenched squads holding a corridor open in case the main defensive force was thrown into retreat, these units were shelled and targeted with mortars during the three-day offensive, it was like all hell broke loose. By midday on Wednesday the 25th, it became clear that the situation was dire, the invaders had taken much of the city and forced the defenders to fall back to the sprawling railway hub. This had emboldened the Russian first tank army, which began to push forward armored elements to support the Russian infantry, to cement control of the city and critical railway hub. However, the 57th Motorized Brigade remained a highly effective fighting force, with forward recce squads forming a fluid skirmishing line and equipped with drones and anti-tank weapons, that kept the Russians on edge, looking to the wooded countryside around the city suspiciously. Footage of two Russian tanks taken out by the 57th Motorized Brigade, on Wednesday 25. But this wouldn't be enough to save the city, the Russian military had committed overwhelming numbers and concentrated artillery to capture Lyman and by the third day of the battle, Thursday 26 May, the city had all but fallen. The Ukrainian forces in the city were ordered to provide cover for the few civilians who were still fleeing the carnage and then to fall back, blowing the last remaining bridge behind them, the battle was lost, but the war goes on. Russian soldier patrolling the Lyman railway hub. The biggest Russian win wasn't the city though, that is all but a smoldering ruin. 
No, the capture of the major railway station with its junctions linking Russia with the Donbass region and heavy machinery for handling shipping containers and processing vast quantities of goods, was the win. Russia does win battles, but winning this overall conflict will come down to much more than just securing a few hard-fought victories, often at great cost in Russian manpower and equipment. Let's look at the overall campaign that this win is merely a part of. The Donetsk pocket, Lyman, is the small city on the top left of the battle map below, the ruins of which are now under Russian military control. This is the latest battle map of the Donetsk pocket, as of 30 May. I've edited it to show the most recent developments since I last covered this ongoing theater that could decide the war. I'm happy to announce that while Russia was battling fiercely for Lyman, the Ukrainian forces that had been engaging the Russian spearhead that had secured a breakthrough in the south pulled off several stunning counterattacks along the important roads I wrote about before. The powerful Russian armored spearhead rushed to seize control of the main road that linked the city of Severodonetsk with the rest of Ukraine but this road happens to sit on a wide open plain devoid of cover making it the perfect site for a counterattack, which I'm certain was the point of the Ukrainian mechanized forces engaging in a staggered fighting withdrawal until they reached the main road. I looked into what other Ukrainian units were in the area and noticed that the 17th Tank Brigade has been sitting almost inactive on the Russian flank for days and the 4th Tank Brigade had taken up position nearby, and I thought to myself, could there be something afoot here? some incredible defensive strategy, because just maybe there is a trap forming, one channeled by rivers, taunted by uncrossable bridges and baited by roads. Henry Bradley's of roads, rivers and bridges. As I predicted, the Ukrainian mechanized forces had baited the Russian spearhead onwards onto the flat open countryside and then with support from the nearby tank brigades. Waited for the perfect moment to counterattack, throwing the Russians into a disorganized retreat from the road and striking in at the Russian breakthrough's flanks, seizing several small villages and threatening the Russian spearhead's supply lines. Much of the Russian forces in this spearhead have been withdrawn and sent to attack the city of Severodonetsk directly, this encirclement seems to have all but failed and another meat grinder has started in the urban streets of yet another city, the war goes on. BS in public management and criminal justice, Austin P. State University, graduated 2011, May 22 This is my answer, it is the quality of the information you are getting. It is not accurate, there is little actual on the ground reporting fro the areas where fighting is occurring. The Ukrainian government keeps a tight leash on journalists of any kind in the Ukraine, they are restricted, and the members of the media you are watching are not telling you this. All they are doing is releasing what information that the Ukraine government gives them and do not expect Russia to behave any different. It will be years before anyone has an idea what has actually happened, and by then it will not be newsworthy.